up again. Today is a very windy, wet, horrible day, so we'll be very quick out here on my drive. And as you can see, I've been busy with the bike, I've removed the bodywork, calipers, some coils and so on, bits and bobs. And my original plan was to remove things as far as I can while still keeping the bike as a roller. So I can roll it in, the, in and out of this garage and it doesn't get in the way. But the more I thought about it, the more I think, actually, sod it. I want to strip it all down and we'll find a home for the parts and then we can make a start on the actual restoration stroke modification. So starting off, I want to concentrate on the front end, in particular, the brakes. And so when it comes to the brakes, you know, these are okay, they're Tokiko single pot calipers from the late 70s. You know, they worked okay at the time, but these days they're, they're very much uh, not really as good as they could be. So my plan was to try and fit some more modern brakes, some more modern brake calipers to the front end. I don't want to change the disc, I don't, I'd rather change it to a bigger size, and I don't want to change the forks or the fork legs, and I don't want to change the front wheel. I don't want to just fit a modern front end, a sort of, uh, you know, 43mm forks with 17-inch modern wheels. I've already done that on my 1170 and on the Mark II, so been there, done it. I really want to keep this bike looking like a late 70s and 650, but with, you know, improvements and upgrades where we can. And so my first idea was to use the Yamaha Blue Spot Stroke Gold Spots because they're really nice calipers. Uh, I've got them on the 1170, you know, very light, very well made, you know, no problem at all. But when I tried to fit them, no way would they fit on this front end because the caliper here, being a single pot, is much fatter on the outside than it is on the inside. Uh, let me see, my finger here is where the centre of the disc would be. I should see quite a difference. Whereas with the modern four pots, they're fat on both sides. And so what happened was that the fatter four pot caliper on the inside here hit spokes. So can't do anything about that. And so as usual, I go on the forums, on the specialist forums for this particular bike. And I found someone who said, yeah, I've done that. I have fitted a four pot caliper to my standard front end. And what he did was, he fitted a four pot Brembo. He said, yeah, they go on. Obviously you have to make a bracket here, but it all goes on okay. And so I thought, oh, that's interesting because guess what? I have got a four pot Brembo, just like the one he's saying he's used. In fact, I've got two. I've got a match pair here. I think these are from a mid nineties, either 916 or a Ducati 996. All rebuilt, all immaculate saving them for something useful so yeah I'll try it on the bike so let's see what happens and so I'll try to fit this rather lovely gold line four pot from Brembo and it still doesn't fit it still doesn't fit for the same reason the uh, the inside of the caliper hits these spokes of the mag wheel so I thought that's all because he said it worked fine so I went back and double checked his uh, details turned out yeah he's got this thing to fit but he has spoked wire wheels, so I guess that's what makes a difference. The spokes must be a little bit narrower than these old, old mag wheels. So I looked at it a bit more, and it turns out that there's a gap between the disc and the inside of the fork leg of about 12 millimeters, so about half an inch. And I reckon I need about three or four millimeters approximately to get this caliper to fit this wheel. So, one option I've got is to make a spacer, in fact two spacers, one for each disc, here, to bring the disc out by say 5mm or maybe even 6mm. It still leaves enough space between the disc and the fault leg for comfort, but it means that this will go on and not interfere with, with the uh, spokes of the mag wheel. It means I've got to strip down the front end of course, so it's just starting to rain now, so I won't be here very long. I've got to strip down the front end, take the wheel off, and basically take a whole front end to go and see Jeff and he can make up the appropriate um, spacer rings for the discs. So that's a job to do, but to do it I've got to be out here in the rain <laughs> and uh, strip down the front end. At which point of course it's no longer a roller, so I may as well keep going and strip down the whole bloody bike and just uh, you know store it away as best I can and that's what's next. Okay, so all this is a bit precarious for the time being, but it needs must. So I've undone the clamps that hold the front wheel, the forks. I've got a jack underneath the 
frame. And I'm just going to gently lift it up very slowly. And hopefully the wheel will just easily just come out of here and the whole lot won't fall on my head. Let's have a look. Very, very cautious here. It's actually more difficult with no engine in the frame because the, uh, there's no way to keep it where it needs to be. Hang on, here we go, look, here we go. It might come out of there now, I guess it will. Yes, it will, that's great. So that's one thing done. I've now got to secure this frame, make sure it's nice and safe. Then I'll remove the forks and also have to remove the yokes, I think, to make sure we get the distance is correct when we make spaces. And now I've loosened off all the bolts which hold on the forks. I've started to remove the indicators and also removed obviously the headlamp shell. And what I've done also is I've photographed everything I'm doing step by step so that when I come to put it all back together again I've got a clue as to what's going on. However that said, that said I suspect all this wiring will be binned because looking at the state of these connectors and so on, you know, it's no point keeping it. I may as well just rip it all out and start again. Um, right, okay. There's the old headlamp shell removed. It's got a couple of non-standard holes drilled in it because I think probably when it got crashed, the uh, the bezel didn't fit quite right, so somebody's drilled some extra holes. But anyway, I don't think we'll be keeping that one. We'll get a new one. And now here we are. It's next day, but one. We've got some dry weather for a change, wind's dropped away, so I've wheeled the bike out. And as you can see, I've taken off the front end, I've removed the forks, the yokes, the wheel and so on. And I've just come back from taking the whole front end to Jeffers Workshop because we need to make some spacer rings to move the discs out by about 5-6mm so I can fit the more modern 4 pop calipers. And while we were over there today, chatting away, Jeff said to me, well, I want to just fit bigger discs, you know, because I've got to make a machined up ring anyway. We can make it as an adapter and fit the bigger discs to match the four pot calipers. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know, because I don't want to go down the route of changing everything on the bike. Tempting though it is. But then something happened which changed my mind. And what it was, we checked out the thickness of these discs. To me, they did look quite well worn. Surprisingly worn, actually, for a bike with 41,000 miles on the clock. We marked it up and it came to uh, 3.99 millimetres in thickness. And it turns out the minimum allowable thickness of these discs, which is engraved on the inside of the disc, 4.5 mil. So these are well overdue to be replaced. I was thinking of getting them reground and reuse them, but no. So these are now scrap, we can go in the bin, and we'll have to do something else instead. And that makes me sort of think about things. Went on eBay from Z Power, those discs are £80 each. Online, on eBay, whatever, a bit cheaper, about £55, £50. So, I had a look round and I found what I think might be a suitable pair of much bigger discs, floating discs from a more recent R6. I just bought them, especially cheap actually, I was quite surprised how cheap they were given how what good condition they appear to be in. But they'll be here on Thursday, it's now Tuesday. So yeah, we'll see how that goes on and hopefully if those discs are as good as I think they are. When we make the spacer, we'll also make it as an adapter so I can fit that bigger, that, that, those bigger discs. And before anybody complains, I won't be using the standard mass cylinder that came with the bike because I've got a really mint R6 mass cylinder already and it came off a previous project sitting in a box that I can use no problem, so that's great. So that done then, uh, with the front end off the bike, which by the way is amazingly heavy. I was surprised how heavy the mag wheel was and how heavy the 37mm forks were. Certainly heavier than say the 43mm forks from the ZRX uh, 1200 I've got on the bike in there. And the reason for that of course is because back in the 70s I think they did over engineer everything and the wall thickness of those stanchions is massive compared to the wall thickness you get in forks these days. But anyway, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is another matter, but they are bloody heavy. However, the first job I've got to do is start to remove the wiring harness, and if you can see here, it's a bit of a mess. I mean, it's a real mess. So I've decided, don't care about it, I won't be keeping it, so the easy thing to do is just go snap and get the damn thing off the bike, because I don't care about all these connectors, I don't care about anything. I'm just going to start again. Okay, so there's the wiring harness. I have to be a bit brutal with it, but I don't care because I'm not going to keep much of this whatsoever. I'll make my own later on. So we'll put that away for the time being and we'll carry on. 
and here we have the alternator and as you can see it's seen better days so I think we'll have to replace that as well good news is we can buy new parts here from uh, Electrex there's some good stuff and it's not too expensive so uh, no great concern no doubt I'll have to clean up this cover as well at some point but that can wait right that can go in the box and we'll carry on and now let's remove the two-piece rear guard and it turns out this one here is made from fiberglass so it's news to me um, might keep it might not so maybe just repaint it should be okay and the original Kawasaki front part of the guard is okay except where it's been bolted up to the frame it's got some big cracks in it so I'm not sure if we can repair that or it's worth finding a better one or a new one no idea but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it anyway let's crack on it's getting dark now it's starting to rain and now I've finally got the back wheel off no struggle but we got there in the end and uh, here we are losing the light now it's getting a bit dark and it's starting to rain again but I'm going to carry on until I've got the swing arm off the frame and then we can stop today and then I think what I'll do is go off for a nice cup of tea because I've earned it and now here we are it's the next day the rain stopped for the time being at least and I've got a nice cup of tea because all the work's finished on the frame and swing arm I've uh, taken everything apart and it's now ready to go off to the powder coaters so what I found was that when I finished everything sort of came apart quite well and the good news was that both the steering head bearings here and the swing arm bearings are in very good condition however the bad news is that when this goes off the powder coating the swing arm bearings will have to be removed which destroys them so I've got to get new ones anyway and in fact talking about this rather battered swing arm I did find quite a big gouge taken out of it here I'm not sure if you can tell so I'll just show you a picture of that right now and indeed that's a very deep gouge I'm surprised that's just not gone all the way through the wall of the swing arm but no problem we can get that fixed we can uh, bang some welding there get it smoothed off and it'll be as good as new but the other thing I want to do with the swing arm is possibly to make a, a brace for it to brace it by welding in some one inch chrome molly tubing underneath here and weld it to the front of the swing arm there so it'll come down and be like that not sure about that yet we'll see we'll see I also found that um, this chain guard here which I think is non-standard has also been in the wars it's got a huge big sort of gouge out of it here looks like a shark's at it and I suspect that's where perhaps the a tie's been hitting it I don't know it's been rubbed away quite badly so we can't use that again and right now of course the back of my garage here is covered in boxes are full of Z650 parts it's a real bomb site but the good news is I've just ordered um, three big 80 litre storage boxes stackable boxes and they're due today so hopefully that'll they'll swallow up all this all this stuff here and give me some much needed room back in my garage so that's that then so what's next what's next well next is a nice cup of tea so yeah what's next is I am going to resist the temptation of taking this frame to Triple S in Bingley straight away because we get it re powder coated now and get it all beautif beautifully finished um, it's probably going to sit around somewhere in my house or in the back of the garage for months on end where it might get damaged and scratched and who knows what so it's, and so I'm going to wait a month or two until uh, we know where the bill can start in earnest rather than having this frame hanging around being battered and whatever in its uh, new fresh paint so for the swing arm of course I've got in there first get it all prepped perhaps make this uh, this under brace for it before that can go off the powder coating too so what's next what's next well as of tomorrow I've got some new discs arriving as I already mentioned and I'll take them down to see Jeff and hopefully we can work out a way of mounting them alongside the the blue spot calipers on that original front end if it works that's great if it doesn't work well we'll just have to uh, think of something else I have been considering fitting a more up-to-date uh, slightly up-to-date anyway rear wheel to the bike off maybe an F4 this is an F2 an F4 or a, a Z750 because that's got a disc brake on it the style of the wheels is the same everything's the same it's just got a, a disc brake rather than a drum brake and I thought about it and thought well is it going to lose much weight from the bike no is it, I don't really need it no will it look better yes so overall I just decided We'll, we'll stick with the drum brake they work pretty well around town I won't be racing the bike so yeah we'll stick with that I've also decided on the finisher want on the main 
uh, bike parts to wheels to frame and so on so we'll talk about that when it's all been done and next up of course is let's see what else has happened oh yes i've also got a new seat arriving this week a uh, Jaleri copy a replica seat so i'm looking forward to see that i think i might just plonk the the tank and the the uh, tail section on this frame and just put the seat on so we can see how it looks that's happening end of this week uh, what else is happening what else is happening well oh yes i've also just bought myself a new rear lamp from a uh, an early zx6r i do quite like that lamp and i think it'd be a lot nicer than the lamp that was on the bike originally whatever that's gone yeah so um that's happening it'll mean i've got to make a new mount for it but that's no great problem and when it comes to the electrics i am moving into the opinion of getting an m unit for the bike and of course the matching switch gear not cheap probably over 400 pounds for the m unit and the switches but i think it will um, simplify the wiring an awful lot and it means i can wire it all up myself no great problem with that i've done it a few times now all by slowly but i understand it now so that that's uh, fine and it also gives the bike some features that i wouldn't have normally such as a uh, alarm and uh, ignition cut out and so on and uh, yeah it's pretty clever stuff so what else what else oh yes the rather giant sized let's go and grab, grab one here these are the giant original indicators they're massive aren't they i want to get something like that but just a bit smaller you know chrome yes but just a bit smaller than these giant things so uh, i'm going to look out for that and i've got some nice ones actually on my buzzy behind me they're quite similar but not quite right so we're still looking for that so we're going to continue with the idea of keeping the bike looking pretty standard but with some subtle updates and changes so that it's improved a lot improved braking make it a bit lighter and so on uh, improved switch gear in improved electrics but from sort of 20 paces away it just looks like an old nice uh, says 50 but when you get close up to it you'll notice there's lots of small upgrades here and there so yeah that's the plan We're still following that plan and yeah all the work's done now so i've now got to wait for my new storage boxes to arrive today and i can pack away all this stuff here and uh, find some much needed room in my garage now in total it only took me probably three hours three hours, uh, three hours four hours to just completely strip down the frame take everything off it and a lot of that was actually just uh, bagging and tagging all the small parts that i want to keep make sure I get them mixed up make sure i get them lost things like the rubber mounts for, the, for these side panels that sort of thing they're easily lost so they've all bagged and tagged somewhere in these boxes so hopefully uh, i'll find them come come the day now when it comes to the build plan for the whole project i do want it to be quite quick i don't want to have a bike like this one behind which has been two and a half years now so this one will be done sometime this year i think the um probably the thing that will slow things down is waiting for the engine to be rebuilt because leslie's doing it it's very busy got a couple more projects arriving quite quickly so we penciled in for some time in the summer the good news is i'm not building the engine from scratch i'm not having to go and find unusual or rare parts to fit on the bike all the parts are there it just needs to be taken down cleaned up cam chain changed the high bow chain in the bottom end changed and hopefully we can be built back up again quite quickly um, so that's going to be the the main uh, weight i guess for the whole project now normally what I do is I just leave the frame untouched, get it powder coated and just leave it so we can then drop the frame over the engine on its side and then build it back up again. But I think for this one I might just carry on, build it back, back up the running chassis so I know everything's okay and then we can lug the, uh, the engine back in the upright frame uh, from scratch because the engine's not quite as heavy as a big Z1 or whatever. So yeah, I think we'll go that way. Otherwise I'm going to have these boxes around me you know for months and months and months and i'll be sitting here with my cup of tea wondering what to do just twiddling my thumbs well when i'm thinking oh i should be bolting on the front end i should be working on the back end i should be finding some decent shots for it and so on so i think what i'll do is in the next month or two i'll concentrate on my part of the project which is getting all this ready making sure everything's fine finding any sort of missing parts i did, I did actually notice that the uh seat lock is missing and i look for it i can't find it so it might be here somewhere but if not i'll go and find one yeah just, just just things like that and also making brackets to fit the new rear lamp when it arrives i'll probably make a new plate behind the side panel to take uh, an m unit and the perhaps a new rectifier regulator because i don't like having these old ones i mean they're 40 years old 
and God knows what state they're in. They might be okay, but I'd rather fit a new part for £70 and, and not have to worry about it. So yeah, that's what's happening at the moment. Um, I'm going to go and see Jeff tomorrow, hopefully, with my new discs, and we'll hopefully come up with a plan to mount it nicely to those forks and use the uh, the blue spots, the Yamaha blue spots, the four pot calipers on the front end. Yes, yeah, so that's it so far. So I'll continue drinking my tea and hopefully go, go and tidy up in here. So that's it for now. So uh, thanks for watching and cheers.